Alrighty, my name is Charlie and I'm with Char Media Group and today I'm going to be showing you how to make a simple t-shirt design. Um, with this design, it's really just something I freelanced a few minutes ago just to show you guys um, how a t-shirt design uh, is done and just how the process works. Um, I, I won't be explaining everything today just because I don't have enough time to do it in one video, but I do plan on making other videos depending on how many people need help with certain things so I will make videos depending on those those that need help to to kind of show you more in depth on how to do it so if you get confused don't worry just try to follow along as much as you can okay so today I will be using Photoshop um, my specific version is CS6 um, you can use whatever version you want um, I encourage you to use CS4 and up so um, here we go let's jump right into it um, this is the design I just made a few minutes ago. Uh, it's really, really simple. I did not take too much time on it. Um, and you know what? It, it's, it is what it is. It's just something to show you guys how this whole process works. Now, with the t-shirt design, we, we are doing this in very high quality simply because you don't want a low quality image getting enlarged on a shirt. It would just look like shit. So today, we're, I'm going to show you how to make it high quality as well. Um, what you want to do is on the top uh, on the top here you want to go file new and from there what we're gonna do is we're gonna do 300 resolution okay so if you're not familiar with that it's 300 resolution normally if you do like a normal design for web and stuff like that it'd be 72 but you wanna try to not do that I, you wanna try to make everything 300 resolution it's just much better that way so what happens here is we're not working with pixels either. We're doing inches. So we're going to go ahead and do 15 by 22, okay? You can do 15 by 20. You can do 15 by 23. You can do whatever you want pretty much. But I would try to stay within 15 by 22, okay? So what happens here is we want to also choose a background color because we're not working on a white canvas here. Our design is on a black canvas. So we want to do background color. My background color is black, so it should go to black like we want it to. Yeah, let's see. And it did. That's what we wanted. Cool. So I'm going to be referencing back and forth. So again, try to follow along as best you can. It, don't freak out if you can't get everything I'm doing right now. It's okay. I will, you know, we'll get to that later on. Um, if you need help, again, you can comment in this video and I will show you how to do it. And I'll, or I'll try to. I can't promise, uh, can't promise I'll for sure help you. Um, all right, so this is a Char Media Group, it says, and it says tutorial videos at the bottom. We're going to try to stick with the same writing and everything we have, but I do encourage you to try to add your own writing and, you know, manipulate the design a little bit as we go. So, and if you do, I would love to see it, too. I would love to see how good you did and how well you followed and everything like that, okay? So let's get right into it. Um, I'm going to start off with the circle uh, right here, okay? And then I'm going to go with the inner circle, which I added a stroke to, so let's get to that first. Alrighty, so from our left navigation tool here, yours might be on the right, but mine's on the left, you want to go to um, the shape tool, and you want to go to the lips tool right here. Um, what happens is, we want to make a circle. Alright. Now, obviously, the circle is a solid image right now, it's, or it's a solid color right now. Um, with the other one, it's just an outline. So what to to make that happen? You want to go to the the other navigation uh, bar right here uh, below the layers palette, and you want to go to FX, okay? And then from there you want to go to color, and you want to make it black to blend in with your background, okay? Now from there you want to go to stroke, and as you may guess, we want to make the color white simply because we want it to be seen on the black um, background. You can make it whatever color you want, but I like to stick with white because it's easier to see for me, okay? Now with this stroke, um, I try to steer away from making t things too thick on the strokes, but f with my specific design I did, I made the um, outer stroke a larger, or a, a, you know, a bigger um, stroke. So we're gonna make it an 80, okay? You know what, let's forget it. Let's just do 90. <clears throat> So I made 90, okay? I'm shrinking it a little bit real quick just because I realized I made it a little too big. You want to try to stay away from making things too big off the bat. Um, so there you go. Now you have our, our outer stroke that we see on this design here, okay? This one might be a little thicker, but whatever. We're just trying to get this done so I can show you. 
um, you're going to go ahead and duplicate it. And then you're going to go ahead and shrink it, okay? Because we're making the inner stroke now. So you want to shrink it. Now, obviously, the inner stroke's a lot less thick, okay? So you want to you want to make put this all the way down to like I believe let's do 40s fine. That looks about right. Yeah, that looks about right. It needs to be a little bit bigger to kind of match up what I just did. That's fine. Fuck it. All right. So there you go. Now you have your your circle. And that's literally how I started this design a few uh, minutes ago. I just made a circle, and I started with that, and I kind of just added to that circle. And that's a lot of my designs. I'll add one shape, and I'll go off that shape and kind of just, you know, do whatever my brain tells me to do kind of thing. It, there's no real structure to what I do. It's, it's, it's my creativity, you know. You, you'll have your own process on how to do things, but this is the way I do it. Now, I do want to note before I continue is... Um, when you're doing this stuff, you really want to make sure everything's centered and everything's aligned because that's a number one thing that uh, newbie designers do. They just don't pay attention to their alignment and proportions and their designs can really look disrupted and distorted. So you don't want that, especially if you're trying to do a design for someone that's paying you or uh, your clothing brand. You want to look professional when you design, okay? So this is a good way to do it. Now, in order to align stuff, what I do is I do Command A on Apple, okay? I don't know what the PC shortcut is, so I'm sorry, but it's Command A, and you want to go ahead and do V if this doesn't pop up, but if you press V, this should pop up right here on the top here, and this is your alignment uh, uh, tool, okay, uh, or alignment navigation bar. Now, what I like to do is go to this uh, line um, center one, and I click on that, okay, and that's going to make sure all my... Uh, all my designs are aligned. Now, this one's already aligned because I'm usually good at eyeing stuff. Um, you might have to take some practice on that, but I got I got it right the first time. And then what I do is I go to the middle one. See, I, it's all perfect. So there you go. So I don't even have to do anything now. It's already all uh, centered. So now I know for sure my, my design's centered. All right. So now from there, what I did is I made these uh, banners, okay? or boxes, whatever you want to call them, it doesn't matter. It's pretty much a banner. Um, alrighty, so we're, we're, we're going to start on these right now, okay? Now I'm going to do the outer one first, and then I'm going to do the inner um, um, box first. And what happens is I take from the first one I made, I take that and duplicate it, and that's how I get the bottom one. So I'll show you how to do that real quick. Alright, so I want to go to my shape tool, like so, and I want to make a rectangle alrighty um, I'm not sure on the width right now but we're gonna go ahead and make it about right there that's fine and it doesn't have to be perfect like I said it, you can do your own thing and just try to stay with me here alrighty so we're gonna go ahead and duplicate that by right clicking on the rectangle and what I did at first is when I made the box I rasterized it and you don't have to rasterize it but I like to rasterize things really uh, fast so you duplicate it and you want to go to Command T, and you want to hold in Shift and Alt, and you want to drag down, okay? And this is going to get those nice top and bottom lines that we have, like so. So from there, you can't see them, obviously, because we didn't do anything yet. But you want to go ahead and do the FX again, and you want to do Stroke. And again, you want to do Inside, because if you do Outside, things tend to lose quality that way. So from that, from that um, Inside, you want to do about 50 for now. And obviously we see some black here we don't want to see, so we want to do Command T, Shift Alt, and you want to drag left or right, it doesn't matter. If you do right, it's going to go, you know, it's going to go shorter and shorter. If you do left, it's going to go longer, depending on what side you're on. So there we go. We're going to make it right there. See? Easy. Nothing to it. So from there, and this one looks a little bigger than the way I had it. Mine's longer and stuff, so alrighty so what happens now is we want to go ahead and um, let's make it a little bit smaller actually it's that's perfect so you want to go ahead and uh, merge layers by right clicking and merging and you want to do um, uh, control A again and then center it like I just talked about and then you want to go to um, you want to right click and then warp or sorry command T and then warp that's an easier way. And you want to go to arc. So from here, you just kind of 
arc it to kind of match the circle. You don't want it to wrap around the circle because it's too much of an arc that way. So I try to to just make it look as good as I can right here. Obviously, it's not going to fit the circle perfectly because, again, it's it's going to look too arced. So what I do is I do about right there, okay? Now, obviously, this is going out of our border here, so we need to make it smaller, which is okay. You know, that happens a lot. You tend to do things that are a little too big or too small, and you have to adjust the sizes. Uh, it's better to go too big than too small, though, because the quality. All right, so you want to do Command-T, and then you want to kind of mess with it a little bit. So that looks about right. And I, I, need a, um, I need to warp it again because now it looks like it's uh, too warped. So arc it again, and it's going to naturally go big, bigger than it did last time, so that's okay. And you just kind of want to adjust it a little bit. So that's perfect. That's what we wanted, okay? Um, all right. So that's it. And, um, you know, I obviously had one at the bottom, so this is where things get easy. You just hold an alt, or you can right-click here and duplicate. But I hold an alt, and I just uh, drag down, and that makes a duplicate of it. See? And then you want to go ahead and center it. And I, what I did is I have these guidelines that go on, and I do encourage you to use them. They're smart guides is what they're called. And they can be found right here in the window uh, tab. Um, so, yeah, that's what I like to use. That's, Or, sorry, you know what? It's not in the window tab. My bad. It's in the view tab. And then you go to show, and then smart guides. Okay? I also use rollers, too, which are these things. But I didn't use it right now because I don't want to confuse you guys. So you want to do Control or Command A. Sorry, what the hell am I doing? So you want to do Command T, and you want to do Flip Vertical. And I'm sorry if I'm not good at explaining everything. This is my very first tutorial video I've done. I've been designing a very long time, just haven't really um, made any tutorial videos. But I decided to up until recently because I want to help people learn how to do this stuff because I think it's interesting and cool. So. Anyway, what I just did is I moved these up and down, okay, to make it look more even with the circle. And now it looks like we have a solid um, solid structure here to our design that I just showed you. So what I want to do is I want to do color overlay, and I want to make this... Sorry, that's not what I'm doing. My bad. What happens is there's a black border that we you can't see, but we don't want that. So I'm going to have to cut it so I can change the color. You can either cut it out by using this uh, magic wand tool, or you can just select the inner uh, so inner layer here, and it will select all the gray if you have contagious off. You can turn it on, and, and what happens is it won't um, it won't select everything. So we want it to select everything. So contagious, and you want to do fill. And by the way, people, I should have made that white before I even did everything else, but that was my mistake. So I would I would make sure this is white instead of. I would make sure that your your uh, color tablet or your color um, tables here are the right colors before you start. So this should be white. They can be color swatches too, um, whatever you want to call them. I don't know the correct name right now. All right, there we go. Now we have our design structure already laid out for us, and it literally didn't take that long. So um, there we go. See. Now, besides the writing and the the other box, we're literally almost done already. It's that simple, people. Um, okay, so what I want to do now is I have an inner box, too, right here, a middle box. And I want to go ahead and add that right now. So it the same process goes for this that, that it did for the, the upper um, banner here, or box, again. Okay, so we're going to make a rectangle here. Uh, let's make it about... Uh, Let's do right there. That's fine. All right, so now what happens is we don't want to have it filled, okay? It's filled with white right now. We don't want that. Um, we want to go ahead and make it um, black so it blends in with the background color that we have selected, which is obviously the black. All righty, so that, then you want to go to stroke, and then you want to do inside, and you want to make it about, let's say, 50 for now. And we can adjust that later on, but let's see what it looks like first. And these will be a little thicker. I, I can do probably like 60. Yeah, that's 60 is fine. Um, I would have I would have messed with it a little bit more actually because I don't like the thickness of it, but it's okay for right now. It's just for design purposes. The only thing I have to say about the thickness and everything is just to make sure it looks right. I mean, it don't make something super thick. 
that just doesn't look right. You need to you need to make sure that you are making your your strokes evenly too. You you know it can't be fifty three. It has to be a fifty. You know you don't want to make it awkward numbers like that. Like you want to make everything even. So for instance, this stroke right here is sixty instead of sixty three. It's sixty. It just makes more sense. And when they go to print it for for your company or for your client that you designed it for, it's gonna look that much nicer. So you want to do a Command T, and you want to go to Warp, and and then from there you want to go to Arc. Same process as before, guys. Same process. And then you just kind of want to make it even with the top one, and that's pretty much it. I mean, it's as simple as that. Now it looks a little bit even. It could have been more even, but it's fine for right now. And then you want to do Command A again, and then you want to center it. And mine's already centered, so there you go. Uh, perfect. So this is pretty much it. I mean, we have a solid design now that we can add stuff to. Now this is really where the creativity comes into play. I mean the first part's really not that important to me. I mean it's it makes the design look that much nicer but what you add to this design is what's really gonna make the finishing touches look that much cool cooler um, and sellable. You know you don't want something that looks boring unless they're going for simplicity of course but um, there's some clients that really want something more out there so alright let's go ahead and add our writing now. Oh, and beside, before we do the writing, you want to go ahead and rasterize this by right-clicking and rasterize, and that's going to finalize it. Alrighty, so we're going to go ahead and add the writing now. Alright, so what I use is this uh, elliptical marquee tool, and then what I have, instead of, you can do it the wrong way, which a lot of people do, which is by, you know, you know typing something, and then going over here, and warping it with an arc like I did the banners but you don't want to do it that way because it distorts the font too much and that looks shitty and no one's gonna buy that design because it looks like you literally just didn't know what you were doing you did it the easy way and that's not always the best way a lot of times designing takes time and that was another thing I was gonna go over with you you wanna really take your time on your designs obviously we're rushing this one but when you're making a t-shirt design you really want to just take your time on it guys just literally take your time on it you don't want to rush it it's never going to come out the way you want it if you rush it and it's not something to be proud of if you're just rushing everything so anyway besides me lecturing you about that let's go ahead and get into this type uh, typography side of it now now go to elliptical marquee tool, uh, marquee tool or markway whatever and you want to go ahead and try to fit it to to match the the shape of this arc that we made for the the banner here and I kind of didn't get it now <laughs> and that is almost about right I think I I can go with that let me see no it's not right sorry this takes time actually I'm gonna try to hurry up but this one takes a little bit of time to get it perfect this part of it is my my least favorite just because of how repetitive it can be alright so that that works that's fine whatever we'll go with it so what after you're done uh, you know making your selection you want to go ahead and do make worth path and this is gonna allow you to type around the circle that you just created which is perfect you know that's what we wanted to do um, and then from here you want to go ahead and select black because we won't we're typing on a white background here with our banner so we need it to show now I'm using Helvetica New for my font choice and it's condensed black which is it allows you to select it right here but you have to download this font offline um, I would buy it if I was you I, I wouldn't steal it off of any site or anything like that that's just not the right way to do it if you have it on your Photoshop that's great but if you need to download it um, I would find a safe place to download it um, again it's just better that way that you have a font that you actually own alrighty so let's get started um, so we're gonna go ahead and do char media group like I did on the other part of it alrighty so just type char media group as simple as that it's a little big of course so we're gonna go ahead and um, go to our um, text uh, tool here and we're gonna set the size down a little bit and then what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go to my uh, path selection tool here and you're gonna um, sorry let me go back to it What you can do is you can also hold in command instead of going to the path selection tool and then it's going to pop up these black arrows and that's where you can drag 
If you go down, it's going to make the uh, text flip. If you go up, it's going to put it upside again. Alrighty, so that's it. Now it's there. So obviously it doesn't look exactly right. It's off a little bit. Or actually, it's off a lot. And it just doesn't look right. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to our um, our uh, text uh, you know, text tool here. This is pretty much just our panel, and it has all the characters that you can mess with, like the size of the font, the width of the font, the spacing of the lettering, um, just everything, really. And then also um, how far it, the text goes up and how far the text goes down. So we're going to go ahead and do that right now by going to this A, and it's got like a little line right here separating the A and the arrow up and you want to select the font and you want to go right with it because that's going to make it go up and then you just kind of keep playing with it until it looks right alright that looks about right and we can make the font a little bigger actually it's a little too small and I don't I'm not really digging how small it is so that looks about right that's fine for now that will do um, if, it, if it wasn't for me doing this video I would take my time more on this by the way it's just Again, we're we're in a time crunch here, so hopefully you can follow along with this. Um, alrighty, so we already did the chart media group. Now we're done with that one for now, okay? Um, and then now we're gonna go to um, the little box here, and we're gonna add some Roman numerals because that's what I chose to do. So um, that looks fine. So we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing. Right click, make work work path. And we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing we did to the top. So I think it's I think Roman numerals for 2013 is M M X I I I. I might be wrong. I'm gonna make it capitalized though. M M X X I I or X I I I. Gosh, <laughs> let's see if that worked. All right, that's perfect. That's what we wanted. So I try to keep it center too. Um, you want to make sure everything's centered again. So. Doing it this way, you know, using the Marque ellipse tool is a little harder to make things centered, but you just got to really have an eye for it and pay attention to your your um, your positioning here. Um, uh, one way I do it is I take this ruler tool here, which I found on the view tool or the view um, menu here, and then I drag down and I make sure that it's all aligned to the bottom of where I put that ruler. And it's a little bit off, but it's okay for now. <clears throat> and you want to make this a little bit smaller just because um, you want to make, you know, you want to put some proximity on everything, um, perspective on everything. And then I'm going to make this a little less, uh, I want to make it less condensed because right now it's really bold and I want it to stand out less than everything else. So, alrighty, there we go. Now we have the MMXIII and that's, sh I think that's 2013. I might be wrong. I don't know, but whatever. So that's there. And then what happens that from there is we want to add the bottom text. This one's a little bit more tricky, guys, and I will just warn you ahead of time. So what I like to do is I'll go ahead and go to Char Media Group, and I'll duplicate it. And I'll use this little eye tool here. You see it on the left-hand side of your layer. And I'll, I'll um, you know, click it once, right-click it, or left-click it once. And that will get rid of um, my, uh, my layer that I just duplicated. See? Now it's not there when you take away this one. That's what we wanted. So now we want to change this to tutorial videos. Tutorial videos. Like so. And then from here we want to do a command again and you want to go ahead and drag down like I said before. And what happens is this is going to make it go all the way to the bottom and then we can use our um, we can use our um, I'm not sure what it's called to be honest with you but we're going to use our tool to move it up and down. See? Now it looks like it's at the bottom now, because it is at the bottom. Photoshop's awesome, guys. You can do a lot with it if you know how. Alrighty. Again, it's not even at all. Literally, it's not even at all. It's just really shitty looking, actually. But it's okay for now. Again, we're just doing this tutorial video to to show you how, how it's done. So, um, it's okay for now. So, Chart Media Group tutorial videos. There it is, right there, guys. And then we have our MMXIII, okay? Now we have one final step um, in order to finish this. And that's just adding the wolf. And as you can see, I didn't stick with the actual design. I did, like, I didn't add 
Um, like I didn't make this the same width and everything. I didn't make this the same stroke and I didn't make the MMX III the same uh, font size and all that, but it's okay. That just goes to show you, you can do really whatever you want with it. Alrighty. I am gonna mess with this tutorial video a little bit just to tweak it because it's bothering me. And I wouldn't do it this way, like I said, it's not the right way to do it, but I'm just gonna make it look a little more even for design's sake. All right, that's still shitty, but it's whatever for now. It's off right here and off right here. <laughs> you know what, let's go ahead and redo it actually. I'm not gonna do the easy way out, guys. It's not the way we do it here. I'm gonna do my ellipse tool again, and I'm gonna go ahead and um, redo this so it, it looks right, because that looked really shitty. So make work path. And let's add the text again. To tour shit. Tutorial videos. I keep misspelling it, oops. <laughs> All right, we're gonna go ahead and go up with it this time so it can go to its proper place. And we're gonna go ahead and make sure it is where it needs to be. And what another thing you can do is you can go to the end of it here and then use this, um, tool here and what this does is it sets the kerning between two characters okay so this allows you to move it left to right on its axis that we made for it see I'm gonna go ahead and put my ruler down to make sure I have it in the right place and once I do I am done with this and then I need to make it the condensed black that I have on the other one alrighty we're not doing too bad here then and then we can add some spacing in between the letters. And that's it, guys. That's See, I just fixed it within a matter of seconds. It's not that hard. You just got to take your time on things. So now it looks a lot better. So there we go. Now we have it. Um, what I did is I took the shape tool, and then I touched it up by just adding some circles real quick. You can do that if you like, or you can add stars, or whatever you like. I don't care. Really, I don't care. It's up to you. My rollers usually tell me when it's even. Oh my lord, come on. <laughs> it's not wanting to do it. Wait, wait. Wait for it. Okay, there it is, whatever. <laughs> so there it is. Now, chart media group is off actually, so I need to align that to match where, where, um, where I had my lips. Uh, shapes that. So there we go. Now we're just gonna adjust it more so it's even. Okay, so that looks better. And we're gonna also make it a little higher. Okay, cool. Lovely. <laughs> So that's that, guys. And then I added the ellipses to ellipse shapes to the bottom too, or circles, whatever you want to call them. See? And then one last thing, guys, and then we're done here. And then again, if you have any questions on how how to do certain things, or you didn't quite understand something, or you have a better way to do things. Really, I'm open to suggestions. I do things my way. I taught myself how to do Photoshop. I taught myself how to design. Um, you know, so I'm my own teacher here. So if you guys know a better way to do it, please teach me. That'd be awesome. Go to open, or I'm gonna go to open because I have the file saved. But I had I used a wolf um, with this specific uh, design. Now, you can use whatever you want. I encourage you to use your own image in there. So mine's a wolf, okay? And what I did to make this work the way I needed it to is I actually just, uh, what you usually wanna do is you wanna go to image and you wanna desaturate the image. 
this makes it black and gray, but in this case, it's already black and gray, okay? Black and white, whatever. And then you want to threshold it. And thresholding it, what it does is it, it makes the image a vector. Well, as close to a vector as you can get it. It makes it a solid color, black and white. And this allows you to customize it. See, uh, the more you, you know, go up, the more, uh, uh, you know, the more, I guess you could say, the more detail it adds. Or sorry, the less detail it adds. My bad. If you go down, it adds more detail, see? So we're just gonna go to about right there is fine for now, I don't care. And what I did is since I'm only, uh, I'm using it on a black canvas, this won't look right on the black canvas. So what I need to do is I need to select, um, shit, I need to go back and threshold it more actually. I didn't threshold it enough. <clears throat> All right, so I need to threshold it more. That's fine. So what I need to do is select the white here. I need to undo contagious because I need to select all the white. You fucker. This thing's stupid. All right, so I need to get rid of the background first, actually. And then I need to select the white. All right, so now that I selected the white, I can cut it. And I can go over here and I can paste it and then I can make it to the right width that I want it or the white, right uh, size I want it, sorry see? there it is guys, the wolf's in there now already and that's how simple things can be, it's just really easy and this design really I had no thought when I was doing it, I just literally went with it and made it happen so alrighty so this doesn't look right. His ears are popping out right here, and I don't like that. It looks like shit. We don't want that, okay? We want to go ahead and go to our circle here. We want to rasterize it. And a lot of times when I rasterize things, I, I put a duplicate layer out here, or just a blank layer, and then I uh, select both, and then I merge them. And that, that allows it to um, merge the effects on it too. So then what I want to do is I want to select on the inside here, and I want to do uh, Command-C and I want to do command B and then from there I have my wolf layer here I can name it wolf I have my wolf layer here and I want to go ahead and hold an alt and this is going to make it to where you can only see it inside that circle that we just duplicated here and then from there we want to add an inner stroke okay and we want to keep this black because we, what happens is we're trying to make this blend in right here see where it's cutting off the ears now that's what we want we want it to look like it's behind it so that's it, guys. Um, that's literally the, t uh, the tutorial video. And I thank you for watching. If you did watch the whole thing, thank you so much. And if um, you need any help, please comment below. Please subscribe. Please tell your friends about my tutorial videos. Um, that would be awesome, all right? If you guys uh, want to see anything else designed, please let me know. I, I do logos. I mean, I do album art. I do pretty much anything as far as graphic design goes. So if you have any suggestions to any other design you would like to see or any other things you would like to know, just let me know and I will make a video for you. Hey, thank you.